Hi guys, this is Becca from Chalkboard Creations. Today we're going to talk about how to make digital interactive notebooks for use inside of Google Classroom or Google Drive. The first step to making a digital interactive notebook is obviously deciding on what type of journal pages you would like to include in your notebook. The first thing you need to do is you need to open up a brand new PowerPoint document. Then you need to decide whether you want your entire notebook to be in landscape or portrait format. Um, I'm going to choose to do mine in uh, portrait, but remember that once you decide, everything that the student adds into that notebook will have to be the same format. Um, I've gotten rid of the text boxes that are normally right here. I'm going to go up here to design and all the way across here to um, slide size and then down to custom slide size. You need to make sure that if you're doing portrait like mine, that you have eight and a half by 11 inches. If you're doing the other way, obviously you would have 11 by eight and a half. This is the standard size for a piece of paper. So if you are to print these out, it will come out um, looking nicer if you stay in that um, size. All right, so then you need to decide if you want to be the one to uh, create this um, notebook page from scratch or if you want to use a template. If you're creating it from scratch, you can um, insert all kinds of shapes and text boxes to make it look exactly the way that you want. I'm going to use uh, a template that I sell in my TPT store. So I've got my digital interactive made a little interactive uh, journal template. This is the packet two. There are three packets, but um, if you're using this, you go to the first few pages and these are actually clickable links. Okay, so I would like to use this particular one. I'm going to right click on it and then go down to open hyperlink and it'll take me directly to the page that I want to work with. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to this side and I'm going to right click it again and I want to copy it okay then I'm going to go back into my blank um, uh, slideshow and I'm going to paste now I need to make sure that I paste with keep source formatting so that everything stays the same on the um, on the, the slide I can go ahead and get rid of this other one now I can add as many slides in here as I want um, I would also take this time to figure out whether I want to give my students an entire notebook or whether I want to give them one page at a time to fill out. It's really up to you and your teaching style. The next step is you need to edit the non-movable parts, the parts that you don't want your students to be able to move once they open their digital interactive notebook. I want to give my students the main structure of their page. A couple things I don't want them to be able to edit. I want to give them the title of the page. Okay, I'm going to name mine the U.S. Constitution. On the templates that I sell in my store, I have two other places where people can edit things. Right here in this blue box and over here on this sticky note. Uh, there's a couple reasons I put a sticky note on the side for directions. This actually saves a lot of space on the actual notebook page that they can be taking notes. Um, a second reason I might put the directions over here is that they don't print out. The Only the, only the actual page would print if I actually wanted to print this out. Um, maybe I have a student with an IEP, maybe I have a student who has no internet at home, but once I've already filled out all the notes, I really don't need the directions anymore, so that's why they're over here. If, I, if you do want to use these directions, I would just um, type in whatever directions that I wanted. I can also use this area for other notes. For instance, what if I said, make sure to study these tests Friday, okay? Um, and so when they got to this page on their notebook, they would actually have a sticky note making sure that they were studying that part. Okay. Um, if I'm using this for the directions, then I would type the objective right here, learning objective. If I wanted to type my directions right here, I can go ahead and get rid of this. Like if I could click right here, I can get rid of the entire thing by pressing delete on my keyboard. At this time, I would also make sure I can do anything else that I want on the sheet that I don't want the, 
the students to be able to edit. Okay, so I'm actually going to copy and paste this. Control C, Control V on my um, PC. I want to use this sheet for who, what, when, why, and how. Okay, of um, the Constitution. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to make this a little smaller. I want to turn this like that, and I would move them so it's exactly where I want it to be. Okay, and I can do. Can, uh, control C, Control V um, to do it again to do the other questions. Okay, and I would continue to do anything else that I want to do. I would add more text boxes. You can also add shapes up here if you want to add some arrows or anything else you want to do. But everything that you do at this point is going to be um, non movable by the students. Step three is to move your digital interactive notebook pages onto Google Slides. Once you have your notebook exactly the way you would like it, including having all the pages you want to give your students at one time in this one document, make sure that you have saved it somewhere on your computer as the PowerPoint. After that, you're going to go to File, Save As, I'm going to do it on my desktop so I can find them again. And I'm going to save each of the um, notebook pages as a picture file. We're going to save them as PNG, okay, um, which is just a normal picture file. We'll press, press Save, All Slides, and OK. This will create a folder on my desktop with all of the picture files from this one uh, PowerPoint presentation. Then we're going to go on to Google Drive. Make sure that you are signed in um, at your school account instead of your per, um, personal one. Go to New and Google Slides and open up a brand new document. Um, I'm going to title this doc document oops, U.S. Constitution. And I'm going to get rid of these boxes. All right, we need to make sure this um, document, this um, Google Slides document, is the right size. So we're going to go to File and down to Page Setup. Click in the middle and go down to Custom. We're going to do the exact same thing we did in our PowerPoint. 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 8.5 depending on what we decided at the very beginning and how we wanted our slides to be. We just need to make sure they match. For each blank slide, you're going to click on background and then image choose. Okay, and then right here in the middle, choose an image to upload. Now remember these are on my desktop and they're all in a folder. And if you have more than one page, they'll all be right here. You just click on whichever one you're wanting and click on open. It will upload into the background of the slide, which means that you won't be able to click on it, which is exactly what you want for the students. So you don't want them to be able to move all the different parts. Okay, and then click on done. And as you see, if I'm trying to click on things, nothing's moving. I'm going to click, yep, nothing's moving. It's all on there for good. The only thing they're missing from our original slide is the sticky note. If you wanted to use a sticky note, you now have this one extra little step of going back in here to your PowerPoint, clicking on copy. Right, I right clicked and did copy. And then I'm going to go back to the um, this one and I'm going to right click and press paste. So there's my sticky note, I can move it out of the way. Step four is to create editable parts for the notebooks in order for the students to actually add the notes to. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create text boxes for this um, page. Now, if you're working with students who um, are older or already know a lot about Google Drive, you probably don't need to do this at all. But for younger students, you're going to need to click on this little box right here and 
make a text box for wherever you want them actually to be typing. So I'm going to write type here, okay, and I'm going to make it um, maybe bold and really big so that I can see it well. Okay, and then I can uh, also take this, right click, uh, press copy, and then right click again, and press paste, and I can make as many of them as I want. I'm going to put one in each of these boxes so that the kids know exactly where to type, where to type their answers into. Step five is to actually distribute the digital notebook to your students. If you're familiar with Google Classroom, this last step is very easy. I've already logged into my Google Classroom. I'm going to go down here to the right hand corner and click on the plus sign and then go up to create assignment. If I go over here to the left hand side, there's a, a symbol, this triangle symbol that is the Google um, Drive. Click on that. If I've already been working on the notebook, it should come up right here under recent, but I can also find it under my drive. Click on it and click add. The most important part is to make sure that you um, click on this right here to make sure that you give each student their own copy. So they all have their own copies. It will automatically save it with the student's name at the top. I can also use this time to add a title. I'm going to add there. I can also add instructions, a due date. I can also make it a different topic. I don't know if you know this, but you can also add it to different classes all at the same time or only specific students if you have different ones that you'd like different students to do. And then down here, this little triangle button, uh, you can also schedule it for a later time or assign it right now. Thank you so much for listening to this tutorial about how to make digital interactive notebooks for Google Classroom.